actually correct this. So this is a tool that's been uh, made for our membership. Uh, and we also have received a lot of feedback on this tool on where this should be going. Again, uh, we believe that this, is, this service is actually what our members are looking for, uh, but we are constantly looking for that feedback to make sure that this uh, service will serve you better. Some services for all. The Ripen CC does not actually provide any forward domain name delegation. That's for a completely different uh, uh, group of uh, folks that deal with internet administration, but we are very much involved in reverse DNS in our service region. And we also operate the K root server. And you can see the instances of K that we have. There are a couple there in the green where we have multiple instances. Uh, the map uh, probably isn't big enough to show you where those where those are, but we have some instance, instances of K that are distributed, of course, globally. So we are one of the root server operators for K. And again, maybe some other areas that we cover that you may not be aware of, Ripe Labs. There are articles and analysis provided here. There are some blogs and feedback where the community is talking about issues, uh, technical topics of interest that are there. Uh, it's great when we see uh, the community come together and provide us uh, what they think uh, are interesting topics they want to discuss. And the RIPE NCC does showcase a lot of the new things that are coming out there, and they're open for discussion so that you can participate and make sure the service goes where you'd like to see it. RIPE STAT, uh, there's access here for, uh, uh, to information, I, uh, the IP address space. Uh, everything from registry to routing data is included here. We are working on the statistics. This is something that I even uh, personally am wanting the RIPE NCC to move a little further in because when I look at the feedback that we received in the survey, we could see the statistics from all the different groups, mainly from our members, also from community, but also from the likes of government. They also are wanting to see these statistics. They know we have a wealth of information that we hold and we are always trying to actually better those so that we can provide you with what you need to do your business. Ripe Atlas, I won't go into too much detail here. My colleague Cave is here, and he will be giving you a great update on what's going on in this area. But it is a global active internet measurement uh, network measuring reachability and also connectivity. So this is something uh, I think is fairly interesting, and we hope that uh, you here in this uh, region will be picking up more of the Atlas service so that we've got good distribution going on uh, globally, really. So, why are we doing all of these, these, these activities and how did we actually reach the conclusion of where we would deliver, or why we would deliver these to you? We had a survey in 2013. We conducted this. The survey gave us 3,500 responses. That's actually a really great set of, uh, of data we had to work with, the largest response we've ever had to one of our surveys. And like I said, here in the Central Asian part, Pretty much every country, in fact, every country in Central Asia that we service provided feedback on this, on this survey. So what are the things that you told us? You wanted more regional presence? Well, we are here today, and we have been around this region, and we will continue to be. I will, I will touch on that. Uh, more language support. Um, currently within ENOG, uh, we're working on this. I've got a team, the two, the two uh, members that we have in Russia are looking at language, how we can actually support uh, this region better with the documentation that we have. So we will set up some kind of task force. Uh, we're still working on, on uh, exactly how that will look to get the right kind of feedback on what we should be translating. More local trainings, we've pumped that up. Uh, more IPv6 case studies and more local engagement. So, as I said, we do have two uh, new staff around these parts uh, in the last 12 months. Uh, they're based out of our Moscow office. We have Maxim Brutikov and Anton Baskov. If they're in the room, can you please stand? Or any one of them in here? There we go, there's Maxim and Anton. He's probably in the, in the hallway having a chat, but Maxim is there. Uh, both Russian-speaking staff members located in Moscow. Fantastic addition to our teams. They are working on the outreach here and actually working with the communities to make sure that we find out what it is that the communities here want from the RIPE NCC and the RIPE uh, community and how we can better pull in uh, the, this part of the region uh, into the fold.
So, as I said from the survey, we took, we took uh, your feedback and from this part of the region what I can say what our regional presence looks like is that we have a, had an IPv6 and more day in Moscow in June. We've had a Kazakhstan regional meeting, IPNCC was there in, in June as well which was really great, one of the first engagements we had uh, in this part, in the, Asia, in the uh, Central Asian part of our, our uh, region. And we're planning a few more events in 2005. We will be going to Georgia, we will be going to Armenia. And of course, there's always the ongoing support that the RIPE NCC provides to ENOG. That's where we are here today. Uh, we very much like working with the ENOG community. Uh, it fits our, our, our model of working, and that's very positive going forward. We also engage with uh, governments within this region, and particularly uh, with the, the ITU, with the RCC group. Um, we are uh, working with actually all the different ITU groups within the region, making sure we understand what these member states are looking for uh, in terms of internet governance, which is a very big word, and we will talk about that in the next presentation, uh, what that actually means and where that's going. So again, we're investigating uh, support uh, for languages, providing translations for key documents, uh, and even so, uh, for some of the training courses that we're doing here. More contact with our membership. Uh, we have extended a lot of that. We have the two, two folks that will be here. They will be running around the region making sure that uh, we have contact with our members. We are having lunches, membership dinners in certain uh, parts of the city, so we pull together the technical community. This is something we feel just enriches the whole community. We're also advancing our capacity building, the courses. We have a two-day technical training on IPv6 that we've just launched quite recently. The e-learning platform is being pumped up so that we can get some stuff done online because not everyone can join together. We do realize that. And the IPv6 roadshow material that we develop, which is a three-day or a five-day hands-on IPv6 uh, training course, which we launched in the, in the Middle East part of our service region, is coming here. So we are working on the translation, we are working on partnering with different institutions to make sure that we've got the right kind of people providing the training uh, in this region. And of course, we're collecting input on website improvements because we are about to launch into revamping our website, so we need the feedback to make sure that it better serves you. So our membership in terms of V6, what are things looking like there? We had a lovely cross in 2012, we're finding our membership uh, Members with the V6 were more than without, and that's gone very steeply up to the uh, up to the right there, as you can see. We have about 7,000 of our members that have allocations of IPv6 nicely covered. Of course, we all know the, the ups and downs of what's going on with IPv6, but I can tell you that our members have taken it, so they, they've got their space, and we need to watch what's going to unfold in the future. As far as the percentage of the AS is announced uh, with IPv6, if we take a look at this, I think uh, we have something quite brilliant to say about Azerbaijan. If you look globally, 18% of, uh, of the AS are announcing uh, IPv6. In Azerbaijan, it's 38%, also well above the CIS, which is only about 11%. So the Azerbaijanis are, are clearly leading in this space. Members with IPv6 from this Central Asian part, as you can see, um, Armenia, as far as percentage-wise of our members that have taken uh, the space, Armenia is, is, is doing quite well, followed by Azerbaijan. We've had a huge jump uh, from 2012 up until 2014. Uh, so the region here is, you can see, most of them are, are, are going quite nicely. People are, are uh, starting to take their IPv6 allocations from us. And the last slide I have is on the general meeting, something for our membership base. We had a general meeting. Our last one was held in Warsaw, in Poland in May. Um, the charging scheme was adopted. It was adopted much earlier than, than, than uh, normally. Uh, 1,600 euros per annum will be the charge. So the fees have gone down, 150 euros uh, from, uh, from 2014. So the, the figure in 2015 will be 1,600 euros. Adoption and implementation uh, process of uh, RIPE NCC insofar as the legacy resource holders, that has been decided at that general meeting. That's great. We really would like to bring the legacy holders in space and into our space and have their uh, allocations registered in the, in, the, in the registry. That's very important for us. We must have a complete registry. 
Um, and the Ripe NCC Executive Board had some elections at the last, and I can say that these are the three candidates that came on board. We now have a, a board of seven inside of our organization, which we feel is better, a better representation for the size of the organization that we have. It's gone from five to seven. Christian Kaufman has come back on. He's been a board member that was re-elected. And we have two new uh, board members, Maria Hall from Sweden and Salam Yamut from Lebanon. It's fantastic to see that we finally, for the first time in Ripe NCC's history, have a good mix of people on our board from the gender uh, area. So we now have uh, a nice balance there between uh, women and men on the board, and that's very nice to see. Oops. And any questions? I think that's the end of my presentation. Any questions for me? Is it on? You have to switch it on. Press the button. Yeah? You can take my microphone. Just a moment. Okay, well, you know my question, which I'm asking you each meeting, I see. Uh, you have two excellent uh, new hired staff for regional outreach, but what are your plans? for regional outreach, what they are going to do. Okay, we've seen that you just hired uh, Anton Baskov and he started translation of documents with Marco Schmidt, as we know. Maybe some other ideas. Yes, we have ideas what you should do, but let's listen to you. Fantastic. That is a very good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, as you well know, we've put this team together. It's fairly new. Uh, we only have this team together for a few months. But the first thing that they did do, to answer your question, was to decide the activities based on the feedback that we got from our survey and just some of the general services that the RIPE NCC provides. So we have our activities outlined for the finishing of 2014 and the rest of 2015, and we will be making these, these known to you. They have been signed off based on the budget, because without actually taking a look at the budget, it's very hard for us to, to understand what the activities uh, will be. So as yet, we are still waiting for that because our membership uh, will meet and sign off on this in October, or in November, sorry. But we already have an idea of what these activities will be, and I'm more than happy to publish these on the ENOG site, or if this is where you, where you believe this, you would like to have them on the ENOG yes. site. Okay, I'm hoping I will join membership activity uh, in November. Yes. So I hope as a member to see uh, maybe exact plans, maybe some ideas, maybe some uh, different uh, uh, variants of regional activities. Yeah. Uh, because as we see, maybe uh, while you are presenting what RIPE NCC is, what Axel presenting what RIPE NCC is, yes. uh, on the topic discussing newly translated uh, policy activities of RIPE NCC, uh, we've seen that some people uh, make no difference between RIPE NCC and TLD guys, for example. I think uh, it's a light failure or maybe deferred success of external relation of RIPE NCC, and we hope this will, will be fixed okay. and RIPE NCC will reach its original activities out. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, we very much do have our, have our activities in place, and they are different. Uh, we've actually had the activities for external relations built uh, separately, the Dubai office, Moscow office and the Amsterdam office, all three of them have concentrations that we've brought together. We will definitely be making these very transparent to you so that you understand what are the priorities that we have for this part of our region. Thank you. Я хотел бы задать короткий вопрос аудитории. Насколько вот отношение или вообще известно о том, что есть русскоязычный материал у РАПНС сейчас? Потому что я не знаю, ну, это достаточно новая вещь. Может быть, кто-то может просто поднять руку и сказать, кто видел вообще русские материалы на РАПНС сайте или в рассылке. И насколько вот это вообще ну, затребовано. Что я... Возможно, просто есть проблемы некоторые с коммуникацией из-за того, что ну, нет было материалов дальше, и сейчас они будут наконец решены.
Okay, I didn't catch all of that. I caught the last part of it. But what I can say is that uh, Anton and Maxime are going to be engaging with this part of the region. And we will certainly, like I said, we are putting together, our idea is to have a small task force put together to take a look at the ripe NCC material and what would be the best to be translated. So I think that's something that we have to work with the members and the community on. It's not something that we want to decide at the RIPE NCC. So it will take us a little time to investigate what we believe uh, should be translated if something should be translated. So yes, yeah, I think that, does that answer your question? Yes, it requires some, some more work, and it's something that we, we know we can't do just inside the organization. We must reach out. Ishmael Wilson? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sergey. Thank you, everybody.